So you wanna learn Matplotlib? I guess you could say the rest is histogram. Today, you're gonna to learn all about histograms in Matplotlib and Pandas. My name's Nick and I teach Python and data science tutorials here and over on my website at datag.io. If you're new here, be sure to hit the subscribe button and click the little bell to be notified of when I release new videos just like this one. What is a histogram? A histogram takes data, puts it into little bins, and then helps visualize the entire distribution of that data set. It's useful to be able to visualize the distribution in a useful and meaningful way. Okay, let's get coding. For this tutorial, you'll want to import pandas as pd, as well as pyplot from matplotlib, and we'll import that as plt. We'll be using a data frame from my book, An Introduction to Python to Data Science. Note here that we're only importing the age column. So when we run this, we'll have created our first data frame, df. We can learn a little bit more about the data frame by printing out the describe function for it. We can see here that we have data ranging from four all the way to 43. Histograms make it easy to visualize the distribution of data within your data set. Since we're working within Jupyter, we'll wanna include the Jupyter magic that allows us to print out plots that we create in line. So we'll write percent sign mat plot lib in line. To create our first histogram, we'll create the most bare bones version that we can. We'll write plt.hist and then the column that we want to create this on, which is the age column. We can see here that this has put out a histogram of the different values. Each of the heights of the bars represents the number of values that fall within that bin. So for example, this bin here has roughly 1600 different records contained within it. Some of the smaller ones here have less than probably 10. We can build on this by actually defining the number of bins that are available within our histogram. So if we wanted to, for example, include 10 different bins, you could write plt hist age and then bins equals 10. Now when we print this out, we can see that there's actually 10 different bins contained within this. Some of them may not look like they're there just because the values are too small. The bins argument here is quite interesting because it allows you to input an integer that would define how many bins there are, but it also accepts a list which lets you define the boundaries of the different bins. So for example, if we knew we wanted to break up our data into five-year increments, we could write out a list that contains these values. Since we know that our data goes up to 43, it might make sense to write bins that start at zero, increment at five, and go all the way up to 45. So we could write the exact same thing that we have up here, and then instead of passing in 10, we're gonna write out a list that starts at zero, the leftmost bin, and increments by five. So now when we run this, we can see that our bins are a bit differently spaced out than before, but they line up with zero to five, five to 10, 10 to 15, and so on, meaning that we have a much stronger understanding of the different bins that actually exist within our histogram. If you have a lot of bins that you're working with, this can get a little bit difficult to write out. In that case, we can actually use the range function to define this list. So we can write what we had before, and instead of passing in this list, we're gonna use the range function. The range function in this case requires three different parameters to make it print out in the way that we want it to. The first value will be the starting value. The second value will represent the last value that we wanna go up to but not include, which in this case is 50. And the third argument will be the steps by which we increment our data, which is five. Now when we print this out, we get the exact same data frame returned, except we didn't have to write out an entire list like this. One of the great things about being able to plot histograms in matplotlib, we can also exclude some of the data that we may not want to cover off. For example, if we wanted to exclude any data below the age of 20, we could do this by simply omitting it from the list. So I'm just going to go up here and copy our code from earlier. And we'll simply remove anything below 20 here. Now when we print this out, we can see that the first bin starts at 20 and continues up. When you're working with relatively large distributions of data where you have 
one value that has almost 1800 different records and another data point that has less than 100, it can be difficult to figure out how much data is actually contained within the 40 to 45 age category. The way you can get around this is by changing the axis to be a logarithmic scale. So let's do that. We're going to write plt hist, then the column that we want to use, bins. We'll use the range function again so we can include the full data set. And now we'll write log equals true. This returns the exact same histogram we had before, but using a logarithmic scale. This allows us to figure out much more easily the different data points that would have been overshadowed by the larger frequencies. By default, matplotlib isn't exactly inspiring in terms of its aesthetics, but it does give you a lot of freedom in terms of actually customizing how it looks. So let's take the code we had before. And we'll add a couple of other parameters that allow us to change how the matplotlib graph actually looks. You can change the color of the bars simply with the color argument. So for example, we'll make it purple. Let's see how this looks. You can see that the bar colors have changed to purple. It can be difficult to figure out to which bin these different columns belong, and that's when adding an edge color can be particularly helpful. So we'll go back into here and write edge color equals black. This allows us to better visualize to which different distributions these values actually belong. Now, what if you wanted to add a title and axis labels to the, to the charts that you're creating? You can do this by adding different attributes to the plot itself. So for example, if we wanted to add an, an X label, you could write plt.xlabel, and then whatever you actually want to call this. So we'll call this age. Now when we print this out, we can see that the x-axis has been labeled age. Similarly, you can add a y-label with this. If you wanted to add a title, you could use the title attribute. There you have it. You've customized your matplotlib graph. Pandas also includes a lot of matplotlib's functionality and is especially handy when you're working with pandas data frames. Since we only have one column within our data frame, we don't actually even have to specify which column we want to return a histogram on. You could simply write df.hist and run this. This returns a histogram similar to before. You'll notice that a grid has been applied and that the data frame immediately applied the variable name to here. If you want to be more explicit about the data that you're working with, you can throw this in to the actual object here by writing age. This returns the exact same thing minus the label up top because we've specified exactly what we want to return a histogram off of. If you don't want to print out the grid, you can simply write grid equals false. Similarly, you're able to define different bin sizes for this. You could do this by writing bins equals 10, which simply creates 10 different bins. Alternatively, if you, again, you want to define the actual boundaries of your different bins, you could write out the list or use a range function like we did in the example above. Similar to before, if you want to add different labels to the various axes as well as a title, you can use the exact same plt attribute that you used before. So let's copy this down here, and then just to show that it's exactly the same, we'll copy this word for word and simply throw them in here. To create our first Instagram, Okay, you've learned quite a bit in this video. You've learned what a histogram is, how to create a histogram with matplotlib, as well as with pandas. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and if you want to be notified of new videos just like this one, hit subscribe and click the little bell icon to be notified. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.